Hi, I'm Chloe from Nothing Original Media, and this is Ryan from Miss May I. We're here at the Crowfoot right now on the Pontiac date of the Up Close and Personal Tour. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Pretty tired right now, but I'm good. Okay. Just finished up sound check. Yeah, it was sounding good. Yeah, thank you. Um, and congratulations on Rise of the Lion coming out two days ago. Thank you. How's that been like so far? What's the response been? It's been cool. It's, it's been out a really short amount of time so far. Um, but uh, we're playing a couple songs that we released early, and those are going over pretty well. Then we got a few others that not many people know yet, but mm -hmm. give us some time, and we'll be in good shape. Yeah, they just need a couple of days. Yeah, it's, pr yeah. it's pretty new. It's been, it's been pretty, it's only been, I think, like you said, two days now, yeah. so. And um, how is the writing and recording process for that different than your guys' past three releases? Uh, we actually took a bunch of time off for this one. Okay. We went into a, a studio and wrote the whole record live together. Um, so we had the whole thing done and performed in a live environment at least once before we took it to the studio. Okay. And then once we got to the studio, the songs were already written, so we had the entire time to uh, track them for real rather than spending two weeks in the studio writing and then only having two to three weeks left, we had the entire time. So okay. it allowed us to just rethink most of the songs more than we would if we were uh, writing the record in the studio, which is what's happened to us the last few times. So you kind of just took it slower and paid more attention to detail? Yeah, we had a lot more time, and okay. a lot more time to think. We, we, uh, we did three records in a row on that schedule pretty much, okay. um, and we wanted this time to finally plan ahead enough with all the crazy touring to squeeze in that amount of time so we could write uh, songs that we are excited about. Okay, yeah, you guys are always super busy. I mean, you've just, like, been turning out release after release, so it's good that you got that time. Yeah, yeah. And then as far as the album art is concerned, whose tattoo is that? Is it, is it a real tattoo? It's a real tattoo. Who's, who's back is uh, that? We, we chose a fan, and uh, it's really funny. Now, now that we've hung out with him a few times, he's a really, really, really big guy. So the <laughs> tattoo is the whole small of his back pretty much. It's like the size of a like a, a, I don't know, whatever kind of ball that size would be. It's pretty big. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. And he was featured in your music video, right? Yeah. The, when they took the photos for the uh, album cover, they were also taking <laughs> the video of the process for the music video for Gone. So he ended up on the record cover in a music video. Um, now he's buddies with all of us, just hangs out whenever we're... That's, uh, that's pretty lucky for a yeah, big yeah. fan. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> that was the whole point. The, the whole thing around the record was lyrics were uh, fan-based. Mm -hmm. The cover, we wanted it to be fan-based and bring the line back because the fans said they missed it on the last record, so we wanted to bring that back. And it was just it was cool to tie the whole thing in together with fans. Yeah, awesome. And then, what's been your favorite new song? You said you've been playing a couple on these tour dates that you've just started, but what's your favorite to play? Uh, you Want Me is my favorite to play live, I think. Um, I don't know, Refuse to Believe is pretty awesome, too. All the new ones are really fun. The only one for me that's weird so far is uh, we're giving Echoes a shot live, and it's a lot different than anything we've ever written. Okay. So I guess when you throw it in the middle between all the super fast ones, it feels kind of weird, but... Yeah. Uh, like I said, well, tonight's only the third time ever, so we'll see. It's all very new. And yeah, this, it's all so new. This tour, the Up Close and Personal Tour, it's very short. It's just a few Midwest dates, um, two of which were in Michigan. And so do you guys have plans to do some bigger tours throughout the year to support Rise of the Lion? Yeah, we're going to start the summer off um, middle of July. Our summer tour will be the Mayhem Festival. Okay. So we'll get to hit all of the U.S. on that. Um, the band has become sort of a, a worldwide band more than the first few years where we would be in America five or six times in one year. Yeah. Now we have we have a really strong fan base in, in Europe and the United Kingdom, and then uh, Australia is always a big one for us, and we just did Japan. So we try to cram in as many American tours as we can, but we got to... Now we're lucky enough to be the band who gets to go, and we have to go play for yeah, other places. Spread the love a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And you're doing Mayhem, and you guys have played Warp Tour a couple of times too. So how do big festival tours differ from your regular like club tour like this? The I feel like the those festival tours just inflate you. You're just so excited when you're on them because it's not just your fan base that you're playing for. You're playing for 
all of the fans that are there that day and you know depending where you are on the bill or who is on what particular festival you're on there could be thousands and thousands of awesome new fans that you have never played for at all those festivals so when you play those you're just the whole time you're just so stoked minus how hot and sweaty it is but yeah you'll deal you'll deal with some hot and sweaty for you kind of get used to it after yeah. a couple weeks yeah we're used to it we okay. did all of Warped Tour 2011 and then the next summer all of Warped Tour 2012 uh, so I think we've got the summer tour thing down after a couple of years of doing it. That's a long tour. It's not like a normal tour where, you know, you get it in in like 25 days. That one's like 45 or 50 days. So we got a, we got a lot of summer outdoor experience now. Okay, good. You're, yeah, you guys are, you got it down pat. Yeah. So you mentioned going overseas, um, and you guys have done that quite a few times now. You've been, had the opportunity to, and it's unique to being a musician. Most people don't have the opportunity. Have you been shocked? Have you had any big culture shocks uh, that you can remember? China was the only one. Okay. Uh, chi I, and I don't know so much if it's because of um, where we were, but the shows were great, and we had a great time sightseeing, but they were, they were fly-in shows. So okay. it was it was overwhelming because you would land uh, really early during the day, maybe noon, get in a van, drive straight to the venue, mm -hmm. set everything up, play the show. Then you get back in a van, you go to a hotel, mm -hmm. and you're up at 5 or 6 in the morning to get on a plane to fly yeah. to the next place. So mm -hmm. the whole time there wasn't really any exposure to anything except like getting rushed between airports and the shows. So. It was a little, it was the only time where I was just exhausted the whole time. Yeah, there was really just so much, paced. yeah, fast paced the whole time with no breaks, that sort of thing. And it was, and it was only three days though, but oh. the, the okay. schedule was just insane. It was so tiring. And I think because of that, anytime we were like outside in a real situation, we were all just like, oh my God, so yeah. tired. I can't handle this. And even take it all in. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Well, switching gears a little bit, um, what do you think is the biggest misconception about having music is your profession like what do, what do people not really understand that uh, that bands are not rich anymore okay <laughs> I think that's the biggest one um, I don't think anybody realizes how big of an effect uh, no one buying CDs has on the industry so that if, if that starts at the very top like the most important piece of the music industry is mm -hmm. selling music yeah. and now that's a really hard thing to do so it makes everything uh, it makes everything that a band does a lot more difficult travel-wise and stuff. But, um, but like I always say, I'm not complaining. I'm still I'm still really happy about how everything is going for us. But I know for a lot of uh, a lot of underground musicians who are still working really hard, you know, yeah. financially, it's a it's a real struggle right now to be in a band. Gotcha. And then this is going to be my last question mm -hmm. for you. Where do you hope to be personally as a musician five years from now? Five years from now, we've done four four records in six years, so I guess we would no. be <laughs> yeah I guess we'd be on number five maybe or maybe number six I don't know we'll see hopefully only number five hopefully okay. it's doing so well yeah. that we only got to put one more out in between then uh, I'd like to just still be on tour I like I enjoy touring and playing shows so if we're still if we're still filling rooms and having a good time and everybody's still coming out I'll be happy. Hey!